Hello viewers, welcome back to the channel. Now today I'm joined by a special guest, Nate, the boss of Moots, and this, the brand new road bike. And today we're gonna to find out all about the bike, go through details, and then later go for a ride too. So Nate, what's the story behind the bike? Who's it aimed at? How did it come to life? Yeah, thanks Dave, and uh, thanks viewers. So this is our new Vermouth 33, launched in January of this year. Okay. So it's a more to be brought to the all road, modern road side of the road cycling category of our lineup, hence the Vermouth's uh, parent name. Um, it's, you know, more of an endurance geometry, all purpose geometry than a crit racing or high performance race geometry. So it's kind of intended for the guy who wants to do it all road bike rather than a specific race bike. So tire clearance is a little greater here. Gearing is uh, a little bit more restricted than the you know, max chain set size. So you'll see um, some of those tubing selections are different than our higher end race bikes. So the, this uses our straight gauge tubing that we're well known for, for the Moots ride quality. So all sourced from the US, our machined in-house dropouts, machined in-house bottom bracket, headset, all these parts that we specifically make for these bikes kind of helps us keep that price point in control. So we're able to offer this bike more on our entry level of the moot spectrum of price range, but it's still a premium road bike just meant for a lot more of a larger audience. So it's still made by hand in the same place as all the other frames, just yeah. made to a different specification. And the tubing, does that impact the ride quality compared to high grade tubing? So the tubing is, you know, different it, with it being st straight gauge. So the diameter on the outside stays the same and the diameter on the inside stays the same. Whereas on our RSL tubing, it's a butted tubes that we use. So they're, they're a thicker wall out at the end of the tubes and they taper to a thinner wall section in the middle. It, it changes the rack quality and the characteristics in some ways in a pro and in some ways in a con, but all in all, with the straight gauge tube, we have a lot larger um, selection of tubes okay. that we're able to work with. So we can tune the ride for rider size, frame size, rider weight, intended use um, a lot more uh, mm -hmm. minutely than we do with the RSL tubes. So I wouldn't say that the ride quality is compromised by any means. If anything, it's actually probably more size specific with this tube set. Interesting, interesting. Um, I noticed the dropouts, uh, different to the higher grade bikes so. though. Yeah, yeah, so in the whole overall scheme of trying to keep the cost of goods within check, you know, a machine part in this case of being the dropouts than a 3D printed um, dropout set, it allows us to kind of keep that cost down. So it's 142 um, by 12 flat mount disc brake. Um, the flat mount um, section on the non-drive side being 3D printed, so a lot smaller amount mm -hmm. of material than on our RSL and RCS. Okay. You mentioned wide tire clearance. How wide are we talking on this bike? Yeah, you know, it's always a slippery slope there, okay. but like uh, we've seen um, being able to fit 38 millimeter width tires within this okay. frame. So uh, our big intent there was to allow a lot of uh, width and space and clearance for fenders and mud guards, and then still run a high volume tire. So we're specking the bike with 32 and 34 C tires with adequate clearance around that. Um, but yeah, we've been able to put up to a 38 in there. Pretty good. And mud guards or fenders, should I say, they can be options on yeah. the bike? Yeah, so if, if you know, territory specific, geographic specific or is interested in mud guards, we will add fender mounts included in the, the cost of the frame. It's just not for everybody. Some people like to leave that aesthetic choice off. Other people, you know, that's a make or break. Okay. So yeah, mud guard, guard um, compatibility is available. So geometry, is it more endurance? Uh, or race somewhere in the middle? Yeah, so our uh, fit here is try to get the rider still in a road position, okay. you know, but not as stretched out or low as our Vermouth CRD. So the back angle's a little up. Um, the head, head tube is a little taller and a little longer front center. Um, not, as, not as much as a, like what a gravel bike would be, but a little bit more of a st stable riding position than uh, racy era riding position. Okay. So we just adjust that geometry and we find that our customer audience base, you know, gets the benefits of the ride quality of the frame and the geometry that we're able to do. So adding some separation from the real race intent models and that customer to the, you know, weekend warriors or all arounders do it all is that more and just joy riding than 
the race aspect or the performance aspect. You know, they're willing to compromise a little there. So we put that as like kind of our moots rider um, standard and then we build off of it from there. And over the last few years, there are a few moots in the background. We've seen some amazing finishes. Yeah. Can you get those finishes on this bike or is it yeah. more of a limited palette? On this no, bike? it's, uh, you know, one of the things that's unique to moots and to titanium specifically is the way that we're able to finish these frames. So uh, we default to what we see here as a brush setting. So okay. it's a, a, you know, it's a brush finish that then we be blast around that um, final pattern. But with titanium, you're able to, to anodize and not in the same way that we all know with the aluminum where you dip the material in a pigment, you're able to, to do a surface oxidation and control the color through electrolysis. So we do a lot of different uh, surface treatments to create these unique colors that are and patterns that are unique to the material. So on our website, you'll see a list of all our premium and signature finishes, and we're able to do that on every model. That sounds good. Uh, so the bike sounds amazing. We'll go for a ride in a minute, but you've been at Moots for quite a while. What's it like working for such an iconic brand and trying to steer it in the right direction through the, the turbulent years we've had <laughs> yeah. recently? Yeah, that's a great question. And, and you know, it's, it's not easy. Like we're a small team, you know, we're just under 20 people. Um, we do almost everything. The whole out. company is 20 people. Yeah, wow. yeah. So the only thing that's out of out of office is uh, we have four salespeople that work out in the field. Um, otherwise, everybody is in Steamboat Springs. So it's a, you know, it's a small operation, and we take a lot of this stuff from raw material all the way through to the finished final product, right in, you know, under one roof. So just keeping everybody in sync, but it's still allowing um, creative freedom. Uh, to allow like the passion of the brand come through the employees to the final product, but making sure that we're not compromising our day-to-day -day efficiencies and making sure that we can be, you know, reputable to produce bikes on time, deliver at, to a high level. So a lot of our, our staff on the manufacturing side, they, they focus in one area, you know, like we have machinists, we have uh, CNC operators, a finish department and welders. And it's not that they don't intermingle or cross train with other people, but they're, they're more or less required to own their end of the bargain. And so that I think allows us to go hand in hand with the production capabilities at a really high standard. And uh, these guys and, and girls are spending so much time focusing on their craft that they just you know, are holding themselves to a level that I think is unforeseen in, in so many accounts. So it, it, the, the hard thing is just to kind of keep that pursuit of excellence while still enjoying what you do. Like we're all, we're all cyclists at heart at Moots and uh, you know, to not just kill the, the passion of that fire, not just like shut that down because it all, all the work stress that comes along with day-to-day -day, um, jobs, that's, that's what we try to balance. So trying to keep people engaged, keep them involved, allowing them opportunities, um, and then allowing that end product to come through for our customers to enjoy. So good. Okay. Is it challenging to remain like, relevant and competitive with all your bikes in the market these days, both titanium and carbon fiber? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's you know, we have a unique niche, right, in, in the whole space, like the cycling is so driven as an aspirational sport in a lot of ways on the high end where you have the pro peloton and all the tech of like the latest and greatest of different things and you know it's not that we're not doing our own tech it just sometimes doesn't match what the mainstream presentation is of like this is what the best cyclists are riding and it being aspirational from for, for, for everybody from the you know normal day-to-day -day rider up to an aspiring young um, Neo Pro, everybody wants that direction. And like we're fighting, we're fighting it a, that fight a little differently. You know, we're not we're not competing, and we're not looking to compete on the arrow gains and like the the wattage. And you know, we're 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 competing on a prestigious level of of like premium quality, like building bikes that people own for a lifetime. You know, ride quality of like building bikes that are meant for this rider um, is very important to us and uh, just getting people to be more comfortable with riding more. And like I, I, I believe in our team is definitely has seen over the years that the more that we get to share that, the better off people understand our brand in this whole space. You know, it's like we just tried to compete against 
where the, the movement is moving on that high carbon um, composite end, it's, it's tough. We're, 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 not, we're not prepared to deal with that yeah. and we won't win. So we're happy to do and handle it the way that we have been. And do you find, um, we're talking about a road bike now, and you have to say the route to gravel bike. What's yeah. the sort of ratio of sales to you? Is it more gravel these days? I imagine it's very yeah. popular in the US yeah. where you're based. Yeah, I mean, right out our front door, you know, we have the uh, Tour Divide ride comes within oh, really? 100 feet of our front door. Um, SPT gravel, one of the a big worldwide graveling yeah. event, it runs right on the roads that we do our lunch rides on. and. Uh, it is like kind of our guilty pleasure that is in our rural Northwest Colorado is gravel. And, and that's where our lineup is focused these days. We have six gravel models, all ranging from, you know, the, the, the pure race bike out to that tour divide model and a soft tail model in there and endurance all around model. Um, so we really think that we're some of the, some of the leaders of uh, gravel diversity and, and we're proud of that because a lot of that comes from the people and what we're doing at the brand, but it's probably about 60% right now is gravel okay. and like roads kind of coming back around. Road had a little bit of a hiatus for us um, as the rim brake error kind of held on in like until it's uh, what we know as its finish line for now. And now the disc brake models are starting to just be the standard. We're starting to see a resurgence of uh, road take place, but by all means, gravel is our is our mainstream, and, and we and we have mountain bikes. Yes, we have one over there yeah. now. That resurgence of road is that from new customers discovering meets for the first time? Yeah, I believe so, and I, I believe like it's it's you know that aspect of road is different now too. Like this bike is a great example of it. Is like road isn't just 25, 28 C's as fast as you can go, you know, on a circuit or on a, on a destination like. These bikes are a lot more capable, you know, with the lower gears, um, the disc brakes, the larger tire volumes. So people are able to do a lot more. And it's not that they're light duty gravel bikes, but you're able to kind of just explore in a different way. And I think that's it is not everybody has great access to gravel, but for some people it's not road riding either because where they go, it's broken surfaces or you have to make connections on mixed terrain or bridle ways. And you just want something that's a little bit more but you don't need a gravel bike either. You know, as we, we were just speaking about before this, like gravel bike over here is, you know, it's muddy conditions most yeah. of the time. So it's, it's almost mountain biking. Yeah. So <laughs> it's like road is almost like gravel and it's gravel is so ambiguous um, geographically speaking that all road is what gravel is for some people or like gravel. And then, you know, in other cases, gravel is a little bit more mountain bikey. So. Yeah, road is coming back in, new customers. Um, I think it's product change for us too. You know, like we have the Vermouth 33 and the Vermouth RCS as our uh, all road kind of modern day road bikes that we really believe in and think they're great for so many people. And then we have the, the Vermouth CRD, um, which is our really full integrated road bike, uh, really tight and, and like, if you ride that bike compared to an RSL from 10 years ago, it's night and day. And it's essentially very similar products, but it's night and day. Just how like the whole structure of all the componentry and the technology of what we're doing with the material and uh, what's also then a, a, a accompanying it. Like the overall package has changed. Okay, sounds good. Well, uh, thanks for your time. Yeah, Some, uh, appreciate fascinating it. insights into bikes. So let's go for a ride yeah. and see how it performs. Here we go, quick first ride on the new Vamoots 33 with Nate from Moots, show him some of our local roads. There will be a full review on the bike coming soon, so subscribe if you want to see that. But quick first impressions, well, it has that classic titanium ride quality. Buttery smooth, just soaks up all the imperfections on these crappy road surfaces so well. And it's as smooth, or smoother than, many good high quality carbon bikes with the same size tyres. And this new bike, despite the plain gauge tubing and the lower price, although it's still expensive, doesn't appear to have lost any of the, uh, the sparkle of a Moots top end road bike. It just rides on my roads so nicely. It's not heavy, it climbs well. 
the steering is well balanced, the geometry suits me. I'm not too upright, I'm not too stretched. Feels really, really good. I love the fact that Moots have designed the bike around wide tyres, so in line with endurance road bikes like a giant Defy, especially like Roubaix. So space for a 38 mil wide tyre. You can option mudguard mounts, which I would do here in the UK. Fit nice 32, 35 mil wide tyre and have a lovely four season road bike. And the lower price of the bike could make it a viable option for people like me and any of you watching who grew up with Moots as an iconic, famous US titanium bike brand. But it's still expensive. The build I'm riding with SRAM Rival Access is $7,500. And here in the UK, a frame set is nearly £6,000 and an old Tegra build is £11,000. Your first time riding in the UK or have you been here before? No, first time riding the Moose 33 in the UK. No. Okay, how's it so far? What are you liking of our roads? Oh yeah, they're not bad. I'm glad I got bigger tires. <laughs> yeah, pretty rough in places, I'm aren't they? I'm glad the sun's out. <laughs> You're yeah. very lucky your son's out as well. Yeah, it's not bad though. So gravel bikes are popular in the UK because our roads, as you can probably tell, yeah. they're pretty poor, aren't they? Yeah, you want a little bit more tire, a little more comfort. And just a bit more security as well, really. Yeah. Waiting for their spring classic here to come to yeah, yeah. Western UK. <laughs> Only a matter of time. So riding titanium is still a very popular material. Why do you think it's still so enduringly popular? Yeah, I think people, you know, have had such great experiences of owning quality products for a long time. It's like gained a great reputation. And you know, cycling is very peer to peer. So you have a good riding buddy of yours or a mate. They've had a Thai bike. You're likely to be inquisitive and give one a shot. They're timeless. Yeah. yeah. You know, there's a lot of things with the aesthetic that doesn't go out of style and I think that's it it's just like people people spend a lot of money on their bikes they want something's gonna last the tie seems to do that in a number of ways tie still just seems to hover around outside of the top of the mountain yeah but still stays up up there on a lot of people's lists it really is remarkable just how well a classic titanium road bike like this stands up in today's crowded carbon road bike market. A lot to like here, a lot to like indeed. Anyway, full review coming very soon. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you want to see that. But until next time, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again very soon.